Today's daf, it's actually tomorrow's daf, Shabbos, is daf Ein Zayin. So we're going to begin about five lines down from the top. Lememra, shall we assume the kulo mimoedos? That all the carbonic zebra that are brought to Tuma, they are derived from the word moed, which we saw appears both in Parshas Pinchas and also in Parshas Emar. And now the Gemara says the following. We don't even be, where do we see in the Psukim that from Moed we can derive the conclusion that it's Dochet Tuma and the carbon zebra is brought with Tuma? To Tanur we learned to the price of Aidaber Moshez Moed Hashem El Bnei Yisrael in Parsha Zebra. It says that Moshe spoke about the Moed Hashem. He taught the Moed Matavalom. What is this pasuk coming to teach us? What dimension of the Moed is being taught by Moshe Rabbeinu in this pasuk? And in truth, all the Moadim are mentioned in that parsha, and certainly Moshe said it to Klal Yisrael. So why did the Torah have to go out of its way and say by Yidaber Moshe's Moadim Hashem El Bnei Yisrael Lefi Shalol Lamad El Alitamid? We only know in two cases, two Karbanas Tzibu, that the Torah says that you are meant to bring it on a moed, which carbonos are certainly moed, time urgent. The Torah spells out carbon tamid and the carbon pesach. In both cases, it says b'moed. And now we look at the psukim. In Parshas Pinchas, regarding the carbon tamid, it says sabbas b'nei yisrael v'martolim es carbon ilach v'ili chay rech nicho chitish bru l'hakrivli b'moed. And in the parish of Pesach, also in Sefer Bamidbar, this time earlier in Parshas Balos, it says, V'yasu b'nei Yisrael sa Pesach b'mod. It's therefore, I know that these two karbonos are b'mod. They are time urgent. Afilu b'shabas afilu b'tuma. But shar karbonos tzibur, what about other karbonos tzibur that are recorded in Parshas Pinchas? At the end of the parish of the Musafim of the Moadim. And where does it say the Moado over there? And there the answer is Shadamar, it says, Ela Tasu Lashem Bimoadechem. It means that Bimoadechem is coming to teach you about all Karbonas Tzibur that are mentioned in that parsha in Pinchas, and all of them are Doche Shabbos and Doche Tuma. So the Gemara continues, the Raisa says, Minayin Rabos Omer Veha Korev Imo. What about the Kevesh, the Kevesh that's brought together with the Omer? And Shteel Lechem Veha Korev Imo. And the Karbonos in Vayikro Chav Gimel in Parsh Semer says, Veha Sisem Biyom Hanifchem Es Omer Kevesh Tamim Ben Shnasoli Ola Lashem. And in the Parsha, of Shtei Alechem, it says, V'ekravtem al halechem shivas kvosim t'mimim b'nei shano parbim b'karachad v'elim shnayim yu ola l'ashem u'min chasom n'izkehem ishei reach n'ichoch l'ashem v'asisem sirizim echad l'chatos u'shnei kvosim b'nei shano l'zevach shlamim So together with the lechem, v'ekravtem al lechem, we have these karbonos this year, izim l'chatla shnei kvosim L'shlamim. And how do we know that these karbonos have the status of afil bituma, afil b'shabbos? After all, they're not mentioned in the parsha of the Musafim and the Moadim that are recorded in Parshas Pinchas, where it says b'moad nechem tabad lomar. We go back to Parshas Emar. It says by Daber Moshes Moadei Hashem El Bnei Yisrael. Hakasiv kavol moed echalukulam, all the karbonos that are mentioned one by one in the parsha above, that concludes with by daber Moshe's ma'adishem. They are all, and including minchas haomer and shtei alechem, which are mentioned in the parsha, all come under the word moade, and moade means even betuma and even b'chav. So Gemara asks, "Why do we need the pasuk?" 
to teach us Moed over and over again in all categories of Karbon Sipa. We have it already with regard to Pesach, we have it with regard to Tomid. Now you have it with regard to Karbon Sipa, Bamoadechem. Why is this all necessary? Trichi. The Ikos of Tomid. Ikos Rahmanah, if the Torah had only taught me Tomid, Hava Mina Tomid has two major advantages that upgrades it to a special status vis a vis all other Karbonos. Number one, Tomid. Kishmo Kenu, it's brought on a daily basis. And that means Shekane Tadir. It's regular, it's frequent. This is something that we need on a daily basis, twice a day. And not only that, Kalil. It has the additional Khumra of an Ola. The Tamid is an Ola, and it's Kulo Kalil, completely burnt. Now, if we only had Tamid, we wouldn't even be able to derive Pesach because Pesach is lacking those two variables. Avo Pesach. Low, meaning it should not be Doche Tum Doche Shabbos because it doesn't have neither Tadir, it's only once a year, it's not Kolil. Most of the carbon is eaten by the owners of the carbon. It's Kamash blood. Therefore, the Torah had to say Moed, even in the context of Pesach. Because of Rachmona Pesach, and you may ask, let's make a Kalvachomer, if in Pesach it's Doche Tum and Doche Shabbos, how much more so Tom that has those two Chomers? And the answer is. Pesach, Shehu, Anish Karis. The non compliance with the mitzvah of Pesach incurs a chi of Karis, an Avera Chamura. This is one of two mitzvahs I say in the Torah that generate Karis if you don't comply with these mitzvahs. And in Tomid, we don't have such a thing as an Onish Karis. Ah, well, Tomid, the ain't Onish Karis. Aim low, perhaps it's not powerful enough, a Chomadik enough to be Dochetuma. If I need the word moed, even in the case of Tamid, and that justifies a moed both in Tamid and in Karban Pesach. Now, why do we need the Torah to again repeat B'mo'adechem with regard to other Karban Sibur? Because Rahman Tarte, Hani Tarte, the Torah would have just given us these two cases of a Karban Tamid and a Karban Pesach, that they override Tumah, they override Chavis. Hava I would have thought, Hani Hu, that because what's common to both Pesach and Tomit is they each have a chumra that doesn't apply to any of the other carbonos. In the case of Tomit, it's number one Tadir and it's Khalil. And in the case of Pesach, it's Anush Karas. Avil Shar Karbonos Sibur, they don't have this Sad Chumra. Neither of them, none of them are Tadir. None of them in Karachiv Karas. And therefore, Aim a low. Perhaps the Torah would say in those cases of those carbonos that it's not Tokhet Tum and Chavis, Kamash Bolan. Therefore, because of Rahman, the Torah had to write, Eilu Tasu Al Hashem Bimo Adechem. As we said before, the Bimo Adechem is the posseg that concludes the whole parsha in Pinchas of all the various carbonos that are brought in the Moadim to teach you that this is time urgent. And Bimo Adechem in its time bring these carbonos, the Musafim. Of the mod, and therefore, for sure, I would know from the word b'moad what I didn't know from the moed b'moad, though neither of Pesach nor of Talmud, that the korbanos tzibur are doche tumin shabbos. Hava mina shar korbanos tzibur aboim lechaper. Now the Gemara is asking the following question: In the parsha that we saw in moedin. We don't derive the conclusion that Minchas Omer and Shteil Lechem Adochas Atumah and Shabbos, and the reason for that is how the Minas Shar Karbonos Sibur Aboim Lechaper. What's common to all the Karbonos Sibur, where the Torah describes them as B'moad Dechem, and they override Tumah and Shabbos, that's because the essence of the Kapar and its goal, its agenda is Lechapar. That's a Karbon Musa. A Karbon Musa is Karev. A carbon, which is always machaper. It's machaper on mitzvah sase. It's even machaper on mitzvah lo sasani tekli sase. Avol omer shtei alechem dein abon machaper lahat to be alma. How would we know, and how could we derive any conclusions from all carbonus tibur to the case of shtei alechem and omer? Shtel Lechem and Omer are not Kaparadika Karbonos, but rather 
אבל אומר שתי הלחם, תהיין בוים לחפר אל להטר ביאלמה נינו, they're only coming to be mighty the two of menachodosh. Lo, I don't know that they would be doch chavos or tumah, but mash malon, therefore the Torah wrote, writes moadi Hashem, that even these two that are coming only lahatir, chodosh, but not as a kapora, they also override tumah, because of omer ukshtei alechem luchudayu, so maybe you might ask, then why couldn't the Torah just teach us? Moadei Hashem, in the cases of Omer Shtei Lechem, which are not Lechapar, and I certainly, certainly would have derived the conclusion that other Korbanas Tzibur are also Dochet Tumen Chavez, and the Goranth is Hava, Mina Adar Abba, Omer Shtei Lechem, Dalimei, there's something very powerful about these Korbanos, the Boim Lahatir. We won't be able to eat Mina Chodesh, we can't bring Chodesh on the Mizbeach without these Korbanos. Ah, well, Hanap, the other Korbanas Tzibur, they're not coming to be mocked or something. Lo. They're only like Kapara, so maybe they wouldn't override Tuma and Shabbos. What overrides Tuma and Shabbos is uniquely this case of a Matir, a carbon Amatir. Now, once the Gemara had explained that the source for our mission of Karbonos, that are Kavul and Zman, that you could be bringing in the Tuma, the Gemara now goes ahead and tries to define the nature of this Hete. And the Gemara first brings what the Amoraim thought in the opinion of the Tana of the Mishnah with regard to certain halachas. So Rua, the Amoroim thought in the yeshiva that Kuli Alma, according to everybody, all the Tanoim would agree, that Tuma is Dechuya Hi B'Tzibur. means that although we have to be mocked of the carbon B'Tzibur, we're only doing so, but less better, we have no choice. Fundamentally, we would try to, as much as we could, obviate and circumvent the need for bringing the carbon B'Tzibur because we don't want to bring a carbon with Tumor. And the Tumor's Tuchuya B'tzibur means that if there's no other choice and no other possibility, that's exactly what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to bring it. But what we're saying is that Tumor Tuchuya B'tzibur means everyone agrees that you're really violating the answer of bringing a carbon with Tumor. But the Torah allows you to do so only because it's necessary. And that's why we could be makriv betumah. And the Gemara assumes now that by it sits laratzos. If you're violating the Easter of tumah when you're makriv the carbon, how could that be? There has to be a certain magic, so to speak, the magic of the tzitz, which is, of course, what the Kohen Gadol wore on its forehead, and that had a, po- a power of being maratza, even betumah. And maratza means that the carbon to be ola even though it's being brought with Tumor. And when the Torah says you could be makrif karbonos tzibur with Tumor, that's predicated on the power of the tzitz to be machshir karbon with Tumor. And the Gemara says that the logic that compels us to draw this conclusion is the lekatan of the shamit lay the omer Tumor hutra with tzibur el rab Yehuda bilvad. There's only one tana, a singular tana. That maintain the tuma is hutra b'tzibur, and that's Rabbi Yehuda, and we're going to prove that from the following price. And we're going to go with the sheet of the Chachamim, which is called Kuli Alma, because Rabbi Yehuda is a das yochid. The Sanya learned in a brisa that sits bein sheyeshno al mitzcho, bein sheyeno al mitzcho meratzeh devir Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon says that as long as the tzitz exists, it's not broken or anything like that, even if the Kohen Gadol is not wearing it, and he's going to prove it from Yom Kippur, nevertheless, it is merat. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Odenu al mitzcho merat, ain't Odenu al mitzcho ain't merat. The power of the tzitz to be merat on tum, on a carbon with tum, it's only if the Kohen Gadol is wearing it. He, in a sense, activates through his levisha of the tzitz, the power of the Kohen Gadol. Omalo Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon turns to Rabbi Yehuda and he says, Kohen Gadol biyom ha-kippur I'll prove to you that tzitz is maratza even if the Kohen Gadol is not wearing it. Because the Kohen Gadol enters into the Kodesh Kadoshim on Yom Kippur, the Eino al Mitzvah, he's not wearing the tzitz. <coughs> he only wears four begadim, and he doesn't wear the tzitz. And yet, for sure, when he goes to the Kodesh Kadoshim, the tzitz is certainly maratza on Karbonus Tzibur. That's the epitome of the machapa, the kapora of Yom HaKippur. 
The Gemara again in Yuma says that if Nitzvah sits, if the tzitz is broken, even Rabbi Shimon agrees that tzitz cannot be mirat. So the whole machlokis is if the tzitz exists in the world and it's in a complete form, but it's not being worn on the far head of the Kohen Gadol. And Rabbi Shimon insists that if you see on Korban, in the Karbanas of Yom Kippurim, where the, the Kohen Gadol did not wear its tzitz, he only wore four begadim, then how could it be? How could there be Ritsu if he's not wearing the tzitz? According to you, Rabbi Yehuda, this is very difficult. Now again, the rest of the year, 364 out of 365 days, the Kohen Gadol wore eight begadim, the Tones, the Mithnasayim, the Mitznefes, the Avnet, the Chochin, the Mitzvot, and the Me'il and the Tzitz. Those are called Big Days of. On Yom Kippurim, when he went into the Kodesh, the Torah says, Ksonis Bad Kodesh Yilbach, and Mithnas say Bad Yelb Sorrow, who Avnet Bad Yachgor, who Mitznefes Bad Yitznof. He's wearing four Begadim, and that's all he wears the Ksonis, the Mithnasayim, the Mitznefes, and the Avnet. These are the Big Day Lovan. He does not wear the Tzitz. And Rabbi Shimon holds that nevertheless the tzitz is maratza by virtue of its very power, even if it's not worn on the metzach of the Kohen Gadol. And you see that from Yom Kippurim. I'm a lot, so Rabbi Yehuda responds, Hanach Yom Kippurim. Don't ask me and don't prove anything from Yom Kippurim that the tzitz is maratza even if it's not worn on the part of the Kohen Gadol. That's not true. If the Kohen Gadol is not wearing the tzitz, it's, you know, he's at that point when he goes to the Kodesh Kodoshim, in fact, he's not being makriv uh, karbonos, except for the only karbonos are the karbonos sibur, and the karbonos sibur don't even need the tzitz. Why, says Rabbi Yuda? Because shetuma hutra b'tzibur. All the karbonos of Yom HaKippurim are brought mishal tzibur, with the exception of the parchatos and the ayol liola of the Kohen Gadol himself. And this is all explicit in the Torah in Parshas Achrimos. So that, what are you proving to me from the Kohen Gadol not wearing the tzitz on Yom Kippurim? The Karbanas of Yom Kippurim were in fact Karbanas Sibur and Tuma Hutra B'Tzibur, which means we don't know, we don't need to liquidate and nullify the, the Tuma because the Torah was Matir Tuma. That's called Hutr, Hutra B'Tzibur. So for the Karbanas Sibur, we don't need the tzitz because Tuma Hutra B'Tzibur. Michlal, we see from this machlokis, at the Rav Shimon Sava, Rav Shimon disagrees, and he holds Tuma, the Chuya B'tzibur. And therefore, even a carbon Tzibur is only the Chuya, and you're violating these Tzibur. So how can the carbon be brought in Tuma? Unless you have Tzitz Maratza. And Tzitz Maratza, even if it's not worn by the Kohen Gadol, Haraya, because on Yom HaKippur, he's not wearing the Tzitz, and yet there are Karbonos that are being brought, and they're being brought even by Tuma, how can that be without a reach The answer is there is reach tzitz, even the coin Gadol is not wearing it on his metzah. Now the Gemara postulates that Kuli Alma, all the Tanoim would agree. And the Tanav mission as well, that Ein HaTzitz Maratza Al-Achilos. That although Tzitz could be Maratza on the Avodas HaKarban, the Akrovas HaKarban, culminating with Zrika, but not on the part that's Nechal, that which is eaten, and it's not brought on the Mizbeach. For example, if you talk about all Karbonos, you have certain Karbonos where the Zichrei Kahuna will eat the meat of the Karbon. That's a Nechal. And if you talk about a Karbon Mincha, then after the Kamitza, there is the Shirayim that's eaten by the Zichrei Kuna. We don't know if one Tana who maintains that Tzitz Maratz al-Achilos, Ela Rabbi Eliezer. So again, we're assuming Kuli Alma. Kuli Alma means in this context, as we saw before, all the Tana, with the exception of one dissenting view, he's a Das Yochim, that's Rabbi Eliezer, the Sanya Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, had Tzitz Maratz al-Achilos. But Rabbi Yossi, and here he's representing the entire Chachamim, Ein had Tzitz Maratz al-Achilos. So as far as Ritzi Tzitz is concerned, although it's Ritzi on the Avoda and the, and the Dam, the Zrika Sandam, it's not Maratza on the Achilos and anything that's Necha. Now, because the Gemara postulates that our Mishnah holds that Tuma Dechuya B'Tzibur, you cannot be Makriv a carbon B'Tuma in the absence of Ritzi Tzitz, because again, there's this interconnection. If you hold Tuma 
The Chuy Betzibur, then it depends on the Ritzu Tzitz. His name of Masnis and the Lok Rabbi Yeshua. Shall we assume that our Mishnah is against Rabbi Yeshua? Because Rabbi Yeshua holds that if the boss of a carbon become Tomei or they're lost, then we cannot be Zorik Bidam. That's called the principle of an Ein Bosar Ein Dam. You cannot be Makr of a carbon, according to Rabbi Yeshua, without the Dam having the potential to be Mati of the boss. And now we're talking about a carbon Sibur, we're holding Kuma, Tuma, and there's no Ritzi on Necholim. If there's no Ritzi on Necholim, there won't be a Nechal. And if there's no Nechal, there ain't Bosar, ain't Dam. So how can we bring the Korban without Bosar? To Sanya, we learned in Abraisa, the Posik says in Tvarim Perikid Beis, and then it says, Al Mizbach Hashem Al Kech Vidam Tvachech Yishotech. So the Pasuk opens up with Basar and Da. Then it goes on and speaks about the Zrika, and then it says, It's all one package deal. Rabbi Shomer, you need both these elements together. And that's what makes a carbon valid. And in the case of Ola, you need that the Basar be Roy Lakrov. In the case of all other Kachim, you need the Basar be Roy Lachila, Ida Achils Mizbeach, and the Emurim that go on the Mizbeach, or the Basar that's Nechal, either to Konim to the Bailin. And if Ein Basar, Ein Dam, Rabbi Eliezer Omer Adam, Afal Pish Ein Basar, Dam is independent of Basar, Shenemar Vedam Zvachech Yishafech, and here Rabbi Eliezer. Is not going to connect those words in the Pasuk with the safe of the Pasuk, Vabasar Tochel. The Gemara is going to ask later on, what do we do with Vabasar Tochel, according to Rabbi Eliezer? But Rabbi Eliezer sees this as an independent Pasuk that ha- the Torah says that Dams Vachechi Shafet. And that means under all conditions, as long as the Dam is not possible, you go ahead and you do this Rika. It's not dependent on the Basar. And if there's no Basar, then it doesn't matter. The Zrika will go on. So what do I do when it says in the Pasuk, that sounds like it's a package deal, and they're interdependent. What does that mean, Basar Bizrika? Have the Omer, Shalul Koton Yesh Bein HaKevesh Lamizbeah, there was an opening between the Rev and the Mizbeach. The Kohen would organize the Ivarim on the Mizbeach. He would stand now on the Kevesh and he would give a little bit of a throw and the Emurim would land on the Eichel Gabi Mizbeach. And this is a mitzvah of Zrika and it refers to the boss who we're talking about, the Emurim that are going on to the Mizbeach. Just like the Dam on the Mizbeach requires Zrika, Adami Shafik, so too. By virtue of this hekesh, we derive the conclusion that the bosar also needs rika. Gabi Mizbeach. The Gemara now clarifies the machlokas between Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Yeshua Nami Aksiv doesn't say in the pasuk that dam zvachecha yishafek, which sounds like the dam is independent of the bosar. Amalecha Rabbi Yeshua responds, Haksiv Gabe. Look at the end of the pasuk. Don't stop in the middle. Read the Sefer, the Pasuk says, Vabasa Tochel, which means that Dam Zorchech Yishofech is an introduction and depends upon Habasar Tochel. So if there's Basar, then there is Dam. If there's no Basar, there's no Dam. And here on the top of Ayin Zayin on the base, the Gemara says that according to Rabbi Yeshua, Hani Tarte Kroy, Lomeli. Why do I need these two drushes? You have the Hekesh at the beginning of the Pasuk where it says Vabos of Adam, indicating that they're one, in the, one indivisible unit. And then you're saying Vadam to teach you that the Dam is only Nishpach, there's only Zrika if there's Achilas Bosor. Chad bi Olav, Chad bi We need one Pasuk to Darshan this halacha of the interdependence of Dam and Basar in the case of Ola, and another Pasuk in the case of Shlomo Utsricha. I need both. The Ikas of Rachmanu Ola 
if the Torah had only taught me. The case of Ola, have a meaning the Torah is being very machmer in Ola. Why? Ola he the Chamir Shekin call it. All the Bosar is given to Hashem on his Mizbeach. It's Lachmi Leishai. And therefore, we're going to be Machmir. We don't have Hakrovas Adam unless there is Bosar. Bosar Roy and not Bosar Tomin. Abu Shlom Lo Chamiri. We don't have that Chumar in Shlomim. It's Emo Lo. I might think in the case of Shlomim, where the Bosar is Nechal of Island, therefore, we're not going to be so Machmir and say we need that Achilles Bosar the Bailim in order for the dam to be valid, is aim alone. And therefore, you might ask, well, tell me the case of Shlomim, and certainly with the Kavachomer, I'll derive the case of Ola. Because of Rachman Shlomim, Hanfamina Adaram. I would have said the exact opposite, spot, which would be more Machmer and Shlomim, and require Bosa. Why? This Bushteach, so part of the Bosa is a Murim that is brought on the Mizbeach, the Chelev and the care of cry and the uh, kloyos and the other part is divvied out amongst the Bible. So if you have two different achilos, that's very significant. Aval Ola, the less beach the achilos, you only have one achilo, the achilo the Mizbeach, aim low. I might think the Torah is not machmir to say that there's no dam without Bosar. And here we're going to stop because it's late and Rabbi Lezanami Hotsiva Bosar Tokel what does Rabbi Eliezer do with Rabbosa Tochel if Dam Vidam's Vachechi Shofech is independent? It doesn't require Achilles Bosa. The Dam stands on its own without Bosa. Why did the Torah add Bosa Tochel? Amalacha, Rabbi Eliezer is going to say, Ahumi Boile, he needs that. She'en Bosa Mutabachila Chizarka Dam to tell me that only after Dam Yishofech, then there's a heter of of the Achilles boss. Now, what does that mean? That the Zerika Saddam will be matted first and foremost, the Achilles Mizbeach, the Emura Magami Mizbeach, and after the Emura Magami Mizbeach, that'll be matted. It's a chain reaction, a domino theory, Achilles Odom. Gemara asks, Hachi, Ema, Kule, Lahachi, Udi, Asa. So maybe the whole Pasuk is coming to this Russia. And when it says, a boss Techel, after the Dam Zerika Shafach, it means that the Dam Shofach is not extra. I need that to link up with Dam Tochel, with a uh, Bosa Tochel, to tell you that the Dam is my to the Bosar. And if a Dam Afal Picha ain't on Bosar, mean no. Now you derive from you, Yosef, from the Bosar, the Dam Shofach, that Dam stands alone even without Bosar. How can you do so? I need that Bosar to teach me that the Dam is my to the Bosar. Amalacha and Rabbi Eliezer is now going to defend his position, but that Amir Sashem will cover in the next year. Okay, so let's just make a note of where we get up to. Amar Lacha, we're up to Amar Lacha, Rabbi Eliezer, and Rabbi Eliezer is going to defend himself, as we'll see Amir Sashem in the next year. Let me take this opportunity to wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much.